Hey guys, Nostrum here. Wire Patch was just released, which is my vanilla Project Aries PvP game manager thingamajig using a ton of redstone and command blocks. And I just thought I'd make this video as a little tutorial on how to import your worlds to use with Wire Patch, and also how the entire thing kind of works. So let me hit F1 and we'll get started. So the first thing I want to show off is the administrator control area. You can see we have a wonderful DJ booth here with a variety of music discs and we also have this kind of quick start guide. Uh, for any map you need to select the number of teams, you need to pick teams, then you choose what type of spawn kit, and then your game type, and then you can start the game. So let me just kind of go over the entire admin area. Here we can you can choose your game difficulty, peaceful, easy, normal, hard, so that's kind of dependent on, I don't know if you want mobs or not. This so next section as indicated by the compass, is the time control section. And you can have it just set the time, you can have it be a constant time. And so this is kind of helpful if you just want to do a normal map or maybe a race for wool where you need to use normal day cycle. Uh, over here we have a command block server kind of broadcast things. Just has little messages that pop up. And then this one is kind of my favorite one. Let's tear this place apart. Hit that, and you'll see why that's kind of a uh, kind of my favorite. And I'll b bounce back over here. Um, this is the team selection. You know, this is just picking how many teams there are. You can do free for all, two teams or four teams. Then you can also have a spectator mode, and you can pick if that is on or off. And uh, that depends on how trustworthy your players are, because in spectator mode, uh, everyone will be in creative and they will be invisible. Over here we have the game rule section, and you can control things such as keeping your inventory, fire spread, mob spawning, block drops, and all that. Then you just hit the upper ones to turn to turn it false, and the bottom to turn it true. Right here we have our spawn kit selection area. You either spawn with just your team's colored hat because you don't have colored names in vanilla. You can have people spawn with a certain spawn kit. And you can also have people choose their classes with specific spawn kits. You can also spawn people in an adventure mode so they can't break blocks during the map. You can also do a normal match or you can do a blitz match where people only have one life. Then back in this section we have the team selection system where we have uneven teams, even teams, team captains, randomized teams, and we can teleport everyone to spawn. Then here's the button to actually confirm and select teams. And I'll show you how that works now. Actually, I'll just kind of do a normal run through. So we're going to do two teams. And then we do spawn naked. And then uneven teams. And we're going to select teams. You can see the message pops up. Pops up. Team spawns are open. Walk into a team spawn and wait until the game starts. So you can see these pistons have dropped down. Players can now walk into their into these spawns. Now, to actually play in the game, uh, you can't have any experience. If you have experience, you will be a spectator. But by walking over this pressure plate, you lose experience. If you join a team using any of the other methods, you'll automatically lose that experience. But if in case people are punching each other um, and you kill a spectator, that's always how you would clear your experience. So this is team spawn. Uh, so let's do, so that's uneven teams. But let's say you want there to be an even amount of players on each team. Select even teams, select teams. And you see the message, team slots are open. Walk through a colored slot to join that team. So you can see uh, only the red one is open. So I'm gonna walk in here get teleported into red spawn and there's some behind the scenes behind the scenes things that happen and now the blue one is open so I'm gonna walk in here and so the next person will go into blue spawn so you can see it alternates back and forth between red and blue so you have an even amount of players on each team of course if you have four teams selected you have the green and yellow spawns open up as well uh, so fly back over Team captains, this does the same thing as even teams, but as you can see there's this message, should be in captain slots. So when you hit the button, and then hit the select teams, uh, you can see team captain slots here, 
any players, the closest player to this position, will be teleported up into a special section of spawn, which is uh, right in here. So up in here, uh, they can see who's currently on their team. And then you can see you're a team captain. Head that way to pick teammates. You can walk over here and see who else is left in spawn and yell at them to be on your team. So that you can win and go and victory and all that kind of stuff. So that's how team spawning works. Also, once the game's done, you can show these messages. Blue team wins. Message pops up and it changes everyone's game mode to adventure so that they can stop breaking other blocks. And then once you have all these <laughs> options selected, you can start the game. And then you can also do delayed start if the administrator wants to play. All they have to do is hit the button. Then they have about 30 seconds to go into a team spawn and change their game mode to adventure to actually play uh, the game. Now let's say you have no experience because you died. And of course when you have experience you would be a spectator. So what you're going to do, you're going to walk into this here. And you can see I've got 10 experience and I am now quote unquote spectating the match. If you didn't see uh, all the, any blocks in my inventory automatically after a while they just kind of disappeared. That's because if you're a spectator, uh, you after about three seconds, you can't hold any items. There's a command that actually uh, just kind of gets rid of all those blocks to try and prevent them from damaging the game. Uh, so if you don't want to spectate the match, either just join a team or just click that button or just walk through there. So that's how spectating works. So this that's how this entire section works. There's so many options. But it's just so wire patch can accommodate a ton of people. Now, how do you actually get your map into the world? Well, first thing you need to do is head over to MC Edit and open your worlds. So we're going to hop over there now. So here we are in MC Edit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the map that I want to import into wire patch. Right here we've got Ruins of Ruin. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the entire map. Just by clicking and going over here, making sure all the boundaries are in and I don't get any of this excess land. And then I'm going to just copy. It's copying the world. And we're going to load world, load wire patch. Here we are in wire patch. And we're just going to control V and import runes of ruin into this world. Make sure you don't clip off a wire patch spawning area at all. And the reason you want to import your map into wire patch is because of all the command blocks. So all you need to do is click import and then save the map. Control S. Here we are back in Minecraft. You can see we have Runes of Ruin here right next to wire patch. Now before I go ahead and change some of the command blocks to accommodate that map, I'm going to explain how the spawn kit section works because this kind of dictates where players go. So you can remember we have spawn naked, spawn kit, and choose classes. Now if I go down into the redstone of the map, you just break in here, you can see we have three different levels of pods. This upper level is spawn naked. So when that, that option is selected, it will teleport everyone from that team into here they'll get dispersed among these five pods here and given these items and then teleported to the, uh, the coordinates you type in. Next section corresponds with spawn kits. So in addition to teleporting people, it will also give them any items you want. All you need to do is put the data value in there and then the quantity. So right now that'd be giving them one sponge. If you want to splash potions on them or something, you can use these dispensers. And then you can also use Seth Blank's Fill Dispensers mod or MC Edit filter to fill those up to capacity. And you might not think that there's these hats will last a while, but in MC Edit, it's actually infinite hats by changing the quantity to filling to like negative one or something. Then this level is classes. And if we break through over here, you can see people would spawn about right here and then they can walk into any of those pods and you can have those pods correspond to classes. 
wire patch is there's so much room for just kind of customizing it you can add additional classes just by copying and pasting uh, technically you can have four maps loaded at once you can have one map where you just spawn with the hat one another map where you can just spawn with the hat or a spawn kit and another map that has classes and then the fourth map would actually be here this is free for all so you can have four maps loaded at once because uh, each row corresponds to team spawns. And since you control which uh, kit they go to, you control where teams spawn. So um, this is where you would put the coordinates of where your team spawn is. So on a random coordinates, you would actually go into the, your loaded map and copy those down. And then you would need to do that for... Uh, the entire row. The reason we have five pods here is to accommodate as many people as we can and have everyone get their items in a reasonable amount of time instead of sorting everyone one by one by one by one and stuff. So you can change those coordinates to a different map you float into the world and so on. Another thing you can do besides just setting everyone to the same team spawn is change it so people spawn in one of five different places so it's kind of randomized spawning so this is red team and then over here we've got green team and it's all underneath the spawns over here we have the free-for-all spawn locations so you can randomize free-for-all spawns and yeah it's all very customizable you can see the sponge right here this controls where observers spawn so you can change your observer spawn. So yeah, that's basically how you import your map into Wirepatch and how you select where people go and where people spawn. Uh, something to note that if any of your coordinates are in the negatives, you need to actually subtract that coordinate by one. So let's say I want someone to spawn right here. The coordinate you'd actually put into a command block is 1845 negative 27. That's uh, something important to note, and that's just how command blocks work. So hopefully that was easy to understand. If you have any questions, please comment below. If you want further ex ex uh, further explanation of how the redstone actually works in Wirepatch, also comment below, and I'll make another video. Hopefully that was easy to follow. Until next time, uh, just have fun playing.